Hey there, boys and girls, how are you doing? I am here. I got my sombrero, my red sombrero on. And it's good because it's almost Christmas, and of course, red's the color of Christmas. And I got my green right here, too. So I am ready with my Christmas sombrero. I, I'm, what do you mean it's not a sombrero? It goes around my head and it spreads out and it's got stuff hanging from it. That must, it's not a sombrero, huh? Boy, and I, I spent, well, I didn't spend nothing. I found this thing. And uh, I thought it was a good sombrero, but you're telling me it's not. Next week, I'll have the right sombrero. I'm sure I'll have it right next week, okay? But anyway, we got to pick up here. Um, this is a story of Rosa. And if you remember, the last time we got together, Rosa had gone to take care of a, a person's house um, way out in Mexico City. Mexico City. Uh, she was there, and it was going to be for a couple of months. But when she got there, and there were three other girls that went with her. Remember, I uh, showed you the picture of them riding on the bus. Well, that was an exciting thing. And, and they came into Mexico City, and, and then they rode the subway, and they got back on another bus, and went up. And this huge house. My, it was a huge house. And, and, you know, Rosa, the one thing Rosa wants is a friend. And she thought, these girls will be together and we'll be friends. Especially the one, she thought, I, I like her. And she smiled at me. And, well, they got there and they worked together for a couple of days. And then Senora Martinez, remember, she was the, uh, I, I don't know whether she was the owner of the house or the uh, person in charge of the house. But Senora Martinez came and said, three of you I'm going to take to other houses. You'll each be at a house. They wouldn't even be together. And Rosa just stayed at that house. And, and she said to Rosa, while I'm taking these other girls, you clean this house because we've got company coming. And I want this house spick and span. I want it clean. And as Rosa was cleaning, she noticed a person coming. A minister was coming to the house. And um, Senora Martinez spoke so sweetly and nice to this minister. And, and Rosa said, why doesn't she talk to me the way she talks to him? And she also was feeling bad because Senora Martinez had taken what was going to be her friends to another place. And they were told they'd be together for, for the time they were there. She didn't keep her word. It's very important that if we promise something, we keep our word and, and do what we say we're going to do. In the Bible, it says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And, and make sure that you don't tell lies. You know, that's one of the Ten Commandments, to not tell lies. Well, Senora Martinez claimed to be a Christian, but she didn't tell the truth. And we need to be sure that we tell the truth. In any event, Rosa did a good job cleaning the house and taking care of things. And, and, and then uh, she wrote a letter to her parents because she was so disappointed and sad. And Senora Martinez came in the room and saw the letter and she said, what's that? And Rosa said, I'm just writing a letter to my family. And Senora Martinez says, let me see that. And she took the letter and she looked at it. So you don't like it here, she said. Well, I, I want to go home. I miss my family. Well, you're not going home. You're going to stay. Well, we, we were only supposed to stay for a, a couple of, of weeks and maybe a month or so. Well, that's all changed. And you're staying, and I've written to your family and told them that you're going to stay longer. Well, Rosa was terribly sad. Terribly sad. She not only didn't have any friends, but the ones that were potentially her friends were gone, and she wasn't seeing them. And she didn't know when she would see her family again. Senora Martinez was not very nice when... God wants us to, to tell the truth and to be honest. Here was Rosa alone and she cried herself to sleep that night, not knowing what was going on. Well, time went by, not just a few weeks, not just a few months, but a whole year. Could you imagine being kept like that? It was almost like being a, a slave or a prisoner. She couldn't go. She wouldn't have any way to get home. She wouldn't know how. She didn't have any money. Theoretically, her money... And I'm not sure that was even the case, but the money was sent to her parents uh, because that's what the woman said, that there would be money provided for the family for their needs. So Rosa never saw the money. So she had no money. She had no way to get back. Well, finally, one day, after a year, she was there. 
Senor Martinez says, you're going home to your family. Uh, you have a, a, a younger sister, baby sister. She hasn't even seen the baby sister. You have a baby sister that, that is sick and they need you to help care for it. So you're going home. So she was put on a bus and sent home. And she got there and she took care of her baby sister. We'll get the right page there. And her sister was very sick. She'd been there for a while, for a few weeks, but the, the Felicia, that was the name of her sister, got sick. And, and one day, as Rosa was caring for her, and, and the parents were away, they'd gone probably to market, I think, to get some stuff, uh, and that's a day trip. Uh, so Felicia was taking, and she heard strange voices. And she thought it was Felicia saying it. It was like, ooh, 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 kind of noises like that almost like an owl howling and, and stuff. Um, and she went over and Felicia wasn't saying anything and she heard these strange noises and it scared her. And so she got out her Bible and she started reading her Bible and the noises stopped. Now, we don't experience things like that uh, very much, but I've known people who did in other countries and, and particularly um, in, in South America and in some of the uh, more primitive societies, uh, like what Rosa lived in, and, and their evil spirits. Uh, they possess, and, and they're, they're scary, because they're powerful, they're from the devil. And so she'd read her Bible, and while she's reading her Bible, the voices stopped. And then when she stopped reading it, the voices came back, and, and she was scared. And while she's reading her Bible, guess who shows up? Grandma. And Grandma is, is a, a witch doctor. She's a shaman. And, and so she practices witchcraft. And she says, what are you doing? I'm reading the Bible because I heard these strange voices. And when I read the Bible, the voices stop. And when I, when I stop reading, they come back again. And Grandma says, those are the evil. Those are the spirits of the dead. And they're going to claim Felicia. She's going to die. Oh, that... That broke Rose's heart because she'd hardly gotten to know her sister and she was very sick. And sometimes um, in, in these countries they, they don't have the proper medicines and the care that they need. They, they don't have doctors in their villages and uh, it costs money to go to the big towns and all of that. And so they didn't know what to do. And, and when mom and dad came home they said, we, we will pray. And, and Rosa said, but grandma said she's going to die. And, and her father said, if she dies, she will be with Jesus. Uh, and if she lives, she will be with us. That's a pretty tough statement to make, but it's a true statement. And, and so um, they, they kept caring for Felicia. And, and we'll see what happens next week. Okay? All right. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this day that you've given to us and for what you have to teach us and how we'll learn to care for one another and to be friends to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to sing our song that talks about, I just want to be a friend of Jesus. And uh, and I, I may have freckles. I used to have freckles. I don't have freckles anymore. I just have wrinkles uh, and, and such. I traded my freckles for wrinkles and, and such. So um, that goes with age, all right? I got freckles on my face, holes in my shoes, the wrong colored clothes, and I'm missing too. I'm not Superman, God, you made me the kid that I am. Oh, thank you, God, for who I am. I don't have to be a Superman. Thank you, God, for who I am. All I want to be is your best friend. Sometimes I run, fall on my knees. I got skins and bruises all over me. I'm not Superman. God, you made me the kid that I am. Oh, thank you, God, for who I am. I don't have to be a superman. Thank you, God, for who I am. All I want to be is your best friend. You remember, a friend is someone who cares for you or someone you care about. And that's that it's important. I want to be God's best friend. I want to care about the things that God cares about. I want to care about the people that God cares about. I want to care about living the way God would want me to live. And, and God cares about those same things. He cares about our friends. He cares about our, our needs. He cares about 
uh, the way we live, and all of that. So we want to be his best friend. My birthmark seems to be in the wrong place, and, uh, and I wish I could remember what the next time. My birthmark seems to be in the wrong place, and I can't keep up with my brother's pace. I'm not Superman. God, you made me the kid that I am. Oh, thank you, God, for who I am. I don't have to be no Superman. Thank you, God, for who I am. All I want to be is your best friend. Can be his best friend and he'll be your best friend too. Alright, see you next week, boys and girls.